How's it going, guys? OK, awesome. Um, well, this is me as a kid. OK, this is me celebrating New Year with my grandma at my home in the flat where I grew up. And uh, one thing um, that my childhood friends would say about me is that I was always a very happy kid. Like, I was incredibly energetic, optimistic, and I just had a great time as a child. There was one thing, though. One thing that I absolutely hated with passion as a kid. The chandelier. So the reason is my grandma would make me take out every single individual piece of glass on the chandelier, clean it by hand, and put it back. OK, so this was one thing that I dreaded doing as a child. Other than that, everything was awesome. Growing up in Ukraine in a flat that maybe is the size of this stage with uh, my mom, my dad, my grandma, and my grandpa. And uh, here is my grandma uh, in the kitchen of my home. Um, this is what my home looks like right now um, after a Russian shelling that hit uh, my hometown. Um, you know, pretty much the roof of the building where I grew up is completely gone and destroyed. The whole kind of apartment block where I remember going around playing as a kid is uh, reduced to rubble. But the, the chandelier, <laughs> it, it's still there to this day. Um, you know, jokes aside, there's one thing that uh, I haven't really told um, anyone uh, that I'm going to share with you is that uh, the, the war in Ukraine, the devastation in my home country, the fact that uh, my grandparents are now scared for their lives at home and thousands of people, hundreds of thousands are suffering, it's all my fault. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. You see, in 2012, I moved from Ukraine to the UK to study law. And just saying, before I left, everything was fine. Okay. Once I move, anyways, everything went south. So I was in my second year of law school, just trying to get to grips with the UK and kind of my new life and all the cultural shocks I experienced here, when um, a really bad thing happened. In 2014, Russia first invaded Ukraine and uh, annexed Crimea. You know, and uh, in the beginning, I was, right after this happened, I was very, very active trying to help. You know, I was uh, organizing seminars in my university. I was organizing protests. I was trying to donate the money that I had as a student. I was raising money. I was incredibly active to try to help and just raise awareness about like what madness is going on back at home. But soon after, maybe after a few months, I started doing less and less. I started talking about it less. I started basically posting less. I started organizing less events. And eventually, I was doing nothing at all, nothing at all to help. The situation at home kind of wasn't as bad as it was before. The fighting was not as bad as it was before. And I just thought, well, that's how it's going to be. And I started going back to Ukraine. I would go back every few months, every month. I even took my um, English course mate um, to Ukraine. And he enjoyed himself a lot. Uh, and right before we were leaving, our course mates would be like, Max, uh, aren't you scared to go back? You know, there's war in Ukraine, like, isn't it dangerous? And I would always laugh. I'm like, oh, you British people, you guys are so cautious. You know what I mean? The war is very far away. It's 200 kilometers away from my hometown. That's the distance from my home to the front line. So surely everything's going to be fine, right? Well, as you know, in uh, February of 2022, Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And it uh, turns out those 200 kilometers that seemed like a long way, um, it only takes Russian tanks a few hours to cover them. Right? So the war was in my hometown. And I found myself at the beginning of this cycle that has happened before, that uh, I called the um, vicious cycle of adaptation. The name is still pending. I know it's not like super catchy, okay? but it's a TED talk. I had to come up with a name for this. So maybe a more creative name in common. But I think in this cycle, when the bad thing happens, it doesn't really have to be as drastic as war in my home, in my case. You know, you can think about like a health scare or like a really tough conversation with your boss at work or a fight with your partner, something like that. Let's say a bad thing happens. In your life, in my life, it was war at home. 
usually you panic. So um, in the morning of uh, 24th of February 2022, my grandma texted me saying that the war has begun. And I went to the toilet to just gather myself for a few hours. This is my place of uh, strength and calm to figure out what to do. I don't know if anyone can relate. Um, so I just kind of panicked initially. And then I started acting. And this time, I felt that I, like, I, actually, like, I actually tangibly can be more useful, right? Because what I do for a living, as many of you guys know, I make videos. And what my business does is we make videos for our clients. So we do this really well. And in the first week after the full-scale invasion, I made more videos about the war at home than in the whole seven years before, while the war was still going on. And, uh, you know, I was trying to do the best I can, going on TV, going around the world, speaking, raising money, and we got hundreds of millions of views, and we raised hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it, which was amazing. Um, and I actually wasn't alone. According to data from Air Media Tech, Ukrainian creators made more than one million minutes worth of war-related content after the invasion of Ukraine. Right, so we were doing a lot, I was doing a lot. But then eventually, again, week after week, month after month, I just felt so exhausted from like dedicating my life to, to volunteering and to like trying to help and just with all my thoughts being about that, that I started burning out. I started just being so tired of this that I just didn't want to do anything at all. And uh, eventually, I kind of adapted again to the situation that was happening. Um, and you know, there is science to support uh, all of our states. Uh, for example, uh, according to Charles Darwin, it's not the strongest of species or the cleverest that survive, it's those that are, most that are the most adaptable to change. Okay, actually, full disclaimer, I don't know if Charles Darwin actually said this, it's just an internet quote, usually quotes that look like this don't have proper attribution. Uh, he probably didn't say it, but it sounds like someone who looked like him would say, right, the beard and all. Um, anyway, so I just kind of adapted and, you know, adaptation is this kind of force that kind of got us to where we are as species, you know, like we can, things change and we just adapt to them, right? But it's not always a positive thing because to me, what adaptation meant is that I started doing nothing. I actually started doing nothing to help because I felt like the task was too big. I couldn't do it and I might as well just not, you know, but we do know um, what happens when you do nothing? An even worse thing, right? So a health scare is no longer just a scare, it's a crisis. A fight with your partner is not just a fight, it's now a divorce, right? And a tough conversation with your boss is no longer a conversation, you've been fired. The war was no longer in my home country, it was in my home, right? So it was kind of in this moment, when I realized that I want to, I don't want to go through the cycle again. Thankfully this time no one was at home, so no one got hurt, at least in my, in my family, right? But I don't want to imagine what's going to happen if I go through this cycle again. And if we go through the cycle again collectively as a nation, right? So I decided to break it. And uh, this is what I'm working on at the moment. It's not a finished solution, but these three things I kind of use now for myself to be able to break the cycle. Number one is for action to fit around my life, not my life fit around action. What I mean by this, in the beginning, um, right after the full, full scale invasion began, I just dropped everything that we had, all of our commercial projects, all of our client work, all of our brand work, all of our content plans to help. And then for months we were just doing that. But of course it was not sustainable, like we couldn't do it for a long time. Eventually the business was on the brink of bankruptcy, I was on the brink of a breakdown, and it just wasn't very helpful, you know? And now what I try to do to be able to do this for a long time is to fit action around my life. So for example, um, I make content about different things, but we also make content about Ukraine. We do work with brands and organizations to have enough money to be able to sponsor things that we want to sponsor in Ukraine and donate. I speak for a living and when I get a chance, for which I'm very thankful, I get to speak about Ukraine, like right now. Yeah, this is from Allah, yeah. The attire has changed. Um, second thing is uh, using inspiration rather than guilt as fuel. 
You know, I think in the beginning, right after the war broke out, I just felt so guilty that I wasn't there. I felt so guilty that, you know, my grandma and my grandpa, they have to call me and I can hear Russian planes above their heads and I'm just not there. And if I were there, there's not much that I can do. You know, that some of my friends have joined, the, have joined the military and I haven't because I'm here, you know. So I just felt so guilty that this guilt was fuel in what I was doing. But eventually this fuel just has become so toxic for me that it just like brought me down. Okay, so now I try to get inspired and get my energy from there. For example, I'm inspired by teachers in Ukraine who are teaching the class over Zoom during a blackout or electricity shortage outside in winter. In Ukraine also, mine is not like the English winter. I'm inspired by the Ukrainian dog, Patron, who helps uh, our military locate and defuse bombs, who is also super cute in uh, his free time. I'm also, um, you must be wondering why I have pickles in my presentation. I'm not inspired by pickles per se, but I am inspired by the story of a Ukrainian grandma who took down a Russian drone by throwing a jar of pickles at it from her balcony. Okay, which is like a classic Ukrainian grandma move. Like my grandma would do ex the exact same. Okay, so I use it as inspiration. Another thing that I have learned is that even if you do these two things, you still have to ask for help. And for me, for my personality, whatever, the, 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 I can go into depth of this with my therapist, but I just don't ask for help all that much. Okay, but what I'm inspired by is Ukraine, my home, because we have been asking for help for a while, for a while as you guys know. And um, the other night, there was an uh, airstrike in uh, Kyiv, and um, there were a bunch of Russian drones that were attacking the capital. And thanks to your help, 52 out of 54 of Russian drones um, have been shot down by the Ukrainian air defense systems. And that is thanks to you guys and thanks to other countries who are helping us, right? Because for your reference, a year ago, in the beginning of the full-scale invasion, all of these would have hit the target, right? So thank you very much for this, but do keep helping. Right, so this is how I am breaking the cycle of adaptation to be able to be helpful for a long time. I don't know if you guys have seen this campaign, Be Brave, uh, around kind of the branding of Ukraine you have. Um, you know, I think it's a, it's a very beautiful um, campaign around the world to raise awareness about the war, but I don't think that as Ukrainians we were born brave. I don't think we are any more brave than any other nation. That is kind of controversial to say um, right now, but I don't think so. I think we just had to become brave. The reason why we had to become brave is because we didn't really have uh, any other choice. I think for myself individually and for us as a country, I think we had a realization that maybe, just maybe, this is our last cycle of adaptation. And if we don't break free from it now, we might just never get another option or another at bat at this. So for you guys in your lives, I implore you to find those cycles and to break free of them before they break you or they break something you love. So thank you very much for listening. I'm going to have to call my grandma and uh, tell her how this talk went. I'll say hi from all of you. Slava Ukraini. Thank you. Thank you.